Some like to say that all wars are banker wars. Well, if you don't think that's true at some level, that the world is run by banks, well, get a load of this. As of the 31st of March of this year, BlackRock Incorporated, one of the largest investment asset management firms in the world, had over $9 trillion of assets under management. <clears throat> now, Serge Varle, a technical recruiter for BlackRock, recently drew a lot of criticism for his very contentious remarks on politics and wars. He was covertly filmed by an undercover reporter. So, yeah, he might not have said this otherwise because he put a dark shade on a black shade on BlackRock. <laughs> anyway, Varley unintentionally disclosed that banks, hedge funds, and asset managers like BlackRock rules the world, not politicians. Varley asserted that uh, through campaign finances, that these financial in institutions, he said this, he said, they buy politicians. He said that uh, you can take a giant, and he used that F word, ton of money and buy people. He said, I work for a business called BlackRock. Again, you know, BlackRock has a history of influence in politics, corporations, and uh, politi uh, corporate culture. I mean, gosh, guys, they kind of run social media to some degree. But moreover, you know, their, their uh, chairman, Larry Frank, you know, he... Uh, He's the guy that come up with the ESG, the uh, environmental social governance thing. And uh, people have woke up to this and pushed back, and it's cost them a lot of money. So much so that Larry Fink backed up on He actually come out late, uh, lately and said that they were backing off on this. Now, I don't know, guys. I think that is just for optics because this is really core to where they want to go. But... Uh, Needless to say, he's in, put a lot of pressure on a lot of companies to do a lot of things that really didn't suit their customer base. And furthermore, that's had a huge backlash on the public. So we're going to talk a bit more in the end here about what you can do, why this isn't hopeless, even though the uh, challenges that's facing most people through these systems is off the charts. But uh, we're going to cover first and foremost here the political side of it. So... Uh, uh, Varley acknowledged that amassing enough riches enables you to buy people. So he went further into detail on this corrupt system, outlining the simple method of buying senators, political candidates, and yes, even the president. He suggested that you, you can buy your candidates. And he says, these senators come first. They are, he used that F-bomb word again, cheap. The, he used that word a lot, which kind of tells you about the inner core maybe the dark core of the dark rock company. He says, these folks, you know, you can buy them cheap. He says, if you have $10,000, which don't, you know, there are people we know that can come up with $10,000. He said, if you have $10,000, you can purchase a senator, a senator. Wow. He says, whoever wins, it doesn't matter because they're already in my possession. And that's what he declared. And he further went on to say, I have, He'd go up to him and say this. I have $500,000 to give you right now. And he says, there's no questions. He says, uh, well, you carry out the necessary actions. You know, he just puts it to him. Say, I got this. And they just buy off on it. They go into it. They know who they are. They know who they're dealing with. And they know what the game is. And they play the game. He says, everyone buys off politicians. Wow. He said, it's not about who the president is. It's about who controls the president's funds. Varley continued, the banks, BlackRock, and hedge, fund, hedge funds, these people are in charge of everything. Well, that shouldn't be no big surprise, right? He said, <clears throat> uh, the BlackRock employee, Mr. Varley, he also admitted that his organization likes to stay out of the limelight since it's simpler to get away with such things if no one is watching. Well, you know, guess what? Everybody's got their eyes on them now. Fortunately. Unfortunately, for BlackRock, this visibility has brought attention to its name in the media. No kidding. That's why they walk back, you know, publicly ESG. But yeah, let's see where that really goes. Varley, of course, was filmed by an undercover reporter. And after this, he removed his LinkedIn profile after that video was made public. Yeah, because why? Because BlackRock despises being in the 
spotlight, according to Varley himself. He declared that, oh, they don't want to make the news. They want people to talk about them. They don't want people to talk about them. They don't want to be anywhere in the radar. <laughs> Guess what? Everybody's got a spotlight on them now, right? He went on to say, I suspect it's probably because it's easier to do things when people aren't thinking about it. Yeah, under the cover, especially when you're trying to pull the rug over people, right? When you're trying to totally manipulate things. You know, guys, it, it's, it's all part of like the rent. You notice how you used to buy software? Now you got a, a, a you know, you basically rent it in installments. You know, the president of Ford laughed at uh, Microsoft and says, you know, boy, I wish I could uh, had a deal like you where I could uh, uh, rent everybody a car and, and force them to get a new one every year or every two years. Like you have to get the updates of Microsoft, the usually useless updates where they just juggle stuff around and call it a new version and you got to pay for it all over again. Yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, who runs that? Who come up with that idea? So that's where they're trying to take everything because you will own nothing and you'll be happy. You're going to rent everything, including your underwear, apparently. Anyway, so to kind of bring some of this into perspective, let's talk, talk about some of the politicians. We'll start with one that everybody knows about. Uh, as of 2021, Nancy Pelosi received an annual salary of $223,500 as House Speaker. Uh, also, as of 2022, she had an estimated net worth of $120 million. Now, how do you go from making less than a quarter million a year to having a net worth of $120 million? Oh, yeah. Now, you know, let's go back and say, talk about the senators. You know, senators are high. So, and the Speaker House is pretty high. Uh, as of uh, 2021, House member don't get as much, but as of 2021, the annual average salary for a U.S. senator is uh, one hundred and seventy four thousand dollars. Ah, but now, now you think about it. So one hundred and seventy four thousand dollars. Can you run a campaign on that? No, that's part of the problem. That's one of the pieces of the problem. The cost of the average campaign for the U.S. Senate varies depending on the state and candidate, of course. According to reports by Open Secrets, the median fundraising total for a winning Senate campaign in each state from 1996 to 2018 was $7.6 million. In 2018, 35 senators, uh, Senate candidates won, spent an average of $15.7 million to do so. It served six years to get that annual salary of $174,000. Wow. <laughs> in 2020, uh, the U.S. election cost $14 billion, making this the most expensive campaign in U.S. history. Yeah, so that's many millions per senator to run for office. That's part of the corruption. You know, they fought campaign refinance, right? They fight term limits. You know, we need to instigate some of these things and get them in the system. Uh, the median net worth of U.S. senators, though, is worth, in spite of their hundred paltry, you know, for possession in a whole $174,000 salary, the net worth of the average sitting U.S. Senator was $2.4 million. Now, how did they get that? How did they come up with all that money on that little salary? Hmm. Maybe they're bought off by a lot of people. If it's $10,000 a piece for some money, of course, they also get tips. Yeah, invest in XYZ, do this, do that. You know, they're some of the most brilliant investors in the world. Yeah. Have you ever, you ever actually met some of these senators and how, you know, some of them aren't that brilliant. Some of them just aren't that bright, but they know, you know, they can get put up on, the, on a podium and sell the right stuff and get elected. You know, they're, they're coaching this. Anyway, well, let's kind of look at the central bankers, for example. I mean, they're, they're the ones in most charge, at least in federal policy at the bank. That don't mean it's the richest bankers there are. By a long shot, no. But Jerome Powell is the current chair of the Federal Reserve. The salary of the chair of the Federal Reserve is set by the U.S. Congress, uh, and for 2019, the annual salary of a Fed chairman was $203,500. Jerome Powell's net worth is estimated to be between somewhere between 18 and $55 million, according to different sources. Do we really know for sure? Eh, of course not. <laughs> so what's all this bring us, guys? It tells us what we already know. This is a confirmation that the system is corrupt. And it gives you some idea of who is doing the corrupting. You know, it's that old adage, he who has the gold makes the rule. That's the devil's golden rule. 
Yeah, not not the one from the Bible. That's the devil's golden rule. He who he who has the gold makes the rule. And you know this goes way back. You know uh, some early bankers, some of the first bankers that loaned the governments, uh, discovered that was the most profitable way to go. Were uh, pioneered, you know, by the Rothschild family because they learned learn that you can loan governments money and they would always have to repay it. Governments would want to borrow a lot of money to fight wars. Yeah. And so they, what they find is that wars are very profitable. And even if they lose a war, they still, you know, the, the winning side will make them pay as part of the, the, the losing the war. They'll make them pay their debts. So the bankers get paid either way. They loan the both, they can loan to both sides and they come out the big, big winners. Also, that uh, encourages defense companies to spend a lot of money. So you got this big military industrial complex, you got the big pharma complex, and you've got the big banks. And they all seem to work together, don't they? They all meet together in certain meetings around the year, closed meetings that were not privy to what's really said. Uh, they have their little clubs, their cliques. And like I showed you in the video earlier, even though they're telling you to live in 15-minute cities, that's their goal. They go to their little annual dude ranches and workouts. They fly in jets, park the jets outside, their little summer vacation or whatever they're doing. Yeah, private jet, big jets too. They're not little private jets, they're big private jets. So, you know, the, what they're trying to set up is a two class system. Oh, yeah, everybody's going to, they talk about social inequity. They're the ones talking, it. they're the ones that push socialism more than anybody. And they, more people into this. Well, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. But what they're doing is taking away everything you have. What happens when you have nothing, when you own nothing? You have no power. You have no basis for sovereignty. You're just a renter. You do what you're told. Yeah, and then they want to come out. Yeah, and the next thing they want to come out with is a central bank digital currency, right? CBDCs. And then they can put the money in your account, and then they can tell you what you can't spend it on. Well, yeah, and that, that money could have a time factor on it. If you don't spend it by a certain time, poof, it go bad. It go gone. It'd be gone. They tell you where to spend it, how to spend it, where not to spend it, and they'll track every little piece of toilet paper you buy. But you want to go buy some kibbles for your nugs? Uh-uh. They won't allow you to buy some things with it, you know? So that's where they want to take things. That's total control. Yeah, it's about the money, but it's also about control. Control means a lot. Because that means them staying on top while everybody else is relegated below. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the old idea. Of, can, uh, how do you say neo, uh, neo, uh, <clears throat> yeah, what's that word? Feudalism. I'm trying, I'm doing this on purpose so to not put all these words together too much, you know. Um, so, guys, this is what we're looking into. We're looking into having a lot of challenges to the individuals out here, to our freedoms, to our personal rights. They don't like the Bill of Rights or anything in that. But you know what, guys? People are waking up, pushing back. That's why a lot of their products lost a lot of market share in the last many months. That's why the chairman of BlackRock had to walk some things back. That's why companies are losing a lot of money for following the, the, the dictates they set up for a lot of those companies. Yeah, a lot of that comes from them. They've pushed a lot of these companies into that. And some of them might have been, you know, there on their own, but a lot of them got pushed into that. And of course, we got uh, the administration telling social media who to take off and what topics to take off social media platforms, and that's being called out. So the good thing is we actually have some members of House Representatives that's calling a lot of this stuff on carpet right now. We need to support that effort. And uh, you can still have some effect because, you know, the key thing to politicians is get a vote. And so when a lot of their constituents start calling in, they got to pay some attention. So I highly encourage you to go to the freedomrestorationfoundation.org and click on that and then click on the Action Center. It tells you how to contact your state representatives, your local state people, and your federal representatives members of Congress and your two senators. So you get one congressman and two senators and you get representatives in your state. They all have a piece of this puzzle, even the city council. So all this stuff they push down to the city and local governments. So you have to, to be aware of all these things, but we can have effectivity and we are, we can change how this plays out. And, and, and another thing, you know, maybe you don't want to be part of their system. 
because this thing is going to lose value. So one way to do that is how something's got value. So check out my links at uh, the Five the Grid below and look into getting you some gold and silver, especially those gold back uh, slips because, you know, they're like paper money. They're easier to spend. You get notes that are one, five, ten, and various denominations and that. It's a lot easier to spend than taking a gold bar and trying to shave off a little bit to get a haircut or buy a can of beans. So check that out, guys. And just remember that these people are all about control. So let's let's look at how we can form our own communities to be independent. And on that regard, go to the uh, survivaltribenetwork.com. Links to that below too. And let's see if we can't form our own communities, we can trade and barter amongst ourselves as much as possible. We just got to find a way to cover our property taxes at some point down the road. But hopefully that's the last thing we got to worry about. So we got a lot of work to do. But we don't have to, you know, we don't have to be steamrolled over either. So that's the thing to remember. But other than that, we got a lot of challenging times coming at us. Get ready, prepare, do whatever you can to take care of yourselves and your family. And that's what we're all about here. I'm bringing you this as part of my message to you keep your eyes wide open and head on the swivel because that's coming at us from every direction right now. And that's why you got to have a head on the swivel. So, with that, I'm going to say, uh, look, hey guys, this platform has just kind of been squelching me down recently. My last live session had a lot of people told me they didn't get notifications for it. I noticed that the attendance was low, especially starting out. And I've noticed in my other videos I've been posting lately, uh, the views were down a lot. So check back on my channel. Always make sure you subscribe, recheck that the bell is checked. And just check back on my channel every day to see if I posted something. I've been trying to post two videos a day. Uh, I got a lot of things coming up. I may have a hard time posting any some days. But uh, I'm trying to get more content out to you. I'm really working hard on that. It takes a lot of time to do it. I got a lot of other things I got to get done. But check back and uh, also share my videos. Share them. Share them far and wide because I'm trying to bring good content to you. If you don't like what I'm bringing, tell me. <laughs> if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, tell me what your issue is. Leave notes below. Tell me where you like this. But also chat within the comments below my videos helps a lot with the algorithms. Even though they may squelch it down, they may turn down a gain that does have, uh, there's mathematical things that play in and how many likes a video gets, how much uh, comments there are below. So cop may leave a comment, comment to somebody else's comment and have a discussion. I mean, the guys that talk stuff in the comments below, y'all can talk with each other. That's a social forum for you to uh, interact and share ideas. I've seen some good ideas shared in the comments below. I've seen a lot of good information put out. You know, I'm only one person. I've got, you know, so much time to amass things and bring them to you, but you're a lot of people. So we can be, we're a community. So let's operate as a community. And the live sessions I have are good because people come in and we're a family in here. So keep that in mind, guys. Thank you for watching. And with that, I'm going to say, have a good day. Greg out.